It happens tonight in California. In the time since the last gathering, we've lost one candidate, but seen no change in the leader of the pack. Donald Trump has remained ahead of all of his rivals in every poll released over the past two months. So what's it going to take for one of the other candidates to make a difference? With me now from Simi Valley is BuzzFeed's McKay Coppins and in Washington, David Katniss of U.S. News and World Report. Great to see you both. Hey, McKay, how can a candidate successfully get under Donald Trump's skin tonight? Well, you know, I mean, I, we, I think we've already seen previews of it over the last uh, few weeks uh, as candidates increasingly become concerned about Donald Trump's continued dominance of the polls. I, I mean, look, I don't know if there is a way to, to get under his skin in a way that will actually make a difference electorally. I think the way that you're going to see candidates go after Trump is not necessarily to take him down, but as a way to score points with their own natural constituencies. So, for example, we see Rand Paul saying that he's going to go after Trump as a phony conservative or a fake conservative uh, and, and emphasize the issue of eminent domain, saying that Donald Trump favors taking properties from small uh, business owners and small property owners and giving them to corporations. That is an obvious appeal to his libertarian base. I don't know that that'll necessarily knock Trump off his game, but it'll be a way to rally Rand Paul's base. And I think yeah. each one of the candidates is going to take approaches in that way uh, as a way to help them, not necessarily to knock him out in one uh, in one blow. Yeah, and David, I mean, the target may be on the back of Donald Trump, but how high are the stakes for, you know, other candidates like Jeb Bush or Scott Walker? I think the stakes are actually high for Ben Carson because right. he's in second place everywhere. If you look at every poll around the country nationally or in these early nominating states, it's Trump and then it's Ben Carson. And one thing we know about this debate is that Hugh Hewitt, one of the questioners, has said he is going to pose questions about foreign policy and national security, something that neither Trump or Carson has laid out in great detail. So will they have a moment that you catch them off guard? Will they have sort of an oops moment on a foreign policy or national security issue? Because really, they've just put forth rhetoric, popular rhetoric, that, that gets a lot of applause, but not policy specifics. And Hugh Hewitt, who's going to be throwing a lot of the questions, has said he is going to ask for specifics tonight. So I think there could be a moment uh, of clarity on their campaigns if if they if they get a tough question. And okay, now, meanwhile, Ted Cruz is airing a new ad today in early states, and it has a parallel to what Ronald Reagan did in 1984. Let's watch both, but the first one is Cruz, and then followed by Reagan. There's a scorpion in the desert. For most of us, its venom is a clear and deadly threat. But others refuse to even speak its name. There is a bear in the woods. For some people, the bear is easy to see. Others don't see it at all. Some people say the bear is tame. Others say it's vicious and dangerous. Scorpions, bears. McKay, is there a candidate who can most successfully carry the Reagan torch in this election? Uh, well, I, I mean, I, I think that this, uh, the, you know, obviously every candidate always says that they're Reagan-esque. I think right. the interesting thing about Cruz's ad there is that th that is appealing in a very similar way that the Reagan campaign did to the very, uh, you know, visceral instincts of not just the conservative base and the Republican Party, but of Americans in general, where where we uh, we view enemy, you know, as a country, we tend to see our enemies uh, as uh, as some some people that need to go out and be destroyed, right? And that's something that Ted Cruz is tapping into. What's interesting about that, though, is that Cruz has continued in a very disciplined way not to uh, go after Donald Trump, who is taking a lot of his support, instead appealing to the conservative base in ways like that, like that ad you just showed. He will not, que he, he's not going to bash Trump because that will be seen as questioning the instincts and opinions of the conservative base, uh, of that populist element of the party. Instead, he's going to continue to make his, his case and take his message uh, to those people and hope that at some point Trump will flame out and he will benefit from, uh, from Trump's flame out. And David, I want to quickly talk about the Democrats. Hillary Clinton has seen her lead cut in half over the past month. We hear Joe Biden taking a swipe at Donald Trump yesterday. Is it the Republicans who have the more stable primary race or the Democrats? <laughs> well, I think it's still harder to make the case that the Republicans have a, have a stable primary right now. The interesting thing in the Hillary Clinton polling is that if Joe Biden gets in this race, uh, it makes it a little bit tougher for her, and if he stays out, her lead 
grows. So that there, I'm sure the Clinton campaign headquarters is watching the Biden movements very, very closely because he will have an impact on that vote and sort of d d determine whether he takes away some from her or, or if it's just a one-on-one, -on -one really, between Clinton and Bernie Sanders. David Kennedy's McKay Coppins, thank you both for being with me this morning.